Well, good Tuesday morning, friends. Another week has come as we are looking at now and being into the sixth month of the year. My, how time flies. You know, I look around and I see all the things that are going on in our country, and I don't want to make a comment about the things that are going on too much, but we know from what we've seen, a very tragic event, a crime in my opinion, has taken place in Minnesota of the officer there. But I'm thinking about our thoughts as Christians today. Oftentimes, I've heard a parent say to their child, you better adjust your attitude quickly or I'll change it for you. Well, God has told us that we need to adjust our attitudes throughout Scripture. I want to turn to Philippians chapter 2 this morning. I want to share with you from verses 1 through 8 about 10 things that can help us change our attitude towards God. First of all, notice the beginning. I'll read the whole thing. It says, Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interest, but also for the interest of others. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a serpent, servant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. So we think about these things. Let me share with you these ten thoughts. From verse 1, remember, we're truly blessed. It says there, is there any consolation? Let us know that the consolation in Christ is the blessings that we receive each and every day. Secondly, he says in verse 2, be like-minded with Christ. Have the same mind. Let's be unified in our thinking. And where he says, fulfill my joy by being like-minded. He's encouraging us to develop the mind of Christ in our life. Verse 3, where he talks about, let nothing be done with selfish ambition. But in lowliness of mind, let us think of others before we think of ourselves. He's saying, don't be self-centered. Let us not think that all that goes on in our world today and all that goes on in our life, not everything revolves around us. You see, humility is one of the greatest traits that a Christian can have. Number four, think of others first. That's the second part of verse three. Years ago, there used to have be a program called the Joy Buzz, which meant Jesus first, others second, and yourself last. I think that's a good thought to think about when we put Jesus first in our life, then we think of others, and we think then of ourselves. Number five, verse four, strive to help others in all ways. Notice he says, let each of you uh, not, uh, uh, look out not only for your own interest, but for the interest of others. Always seek the opportunity to do good for someone. Always seek opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world. Number six, again, going back very similar to point number two, but have the attitude of Christ. You see, that was the attitude of Christ. He wasn't concerned about himself, but he was concerned about those who he came into the world to minister to. He didn't come to be ministered to. He came to minister, as we're told in the gospel records. Number seven, don't emphasize your rights, but emphasize God's ways. In verse six, it says about Jesus in his mindset, who being in the form of God, yes, Jesus was God in the flesh. Jesus was part of the Godhead. But notice it says, he did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. All that we do in our life, our rights that we have, all of the things that we do are God-given rights. They are rights that he has blessed us with the ability to fulfill. Let us not think about ourselves, but let us think about what God wants us to do. And then number eight in verse seven, 
where it says he made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a servant. Look for ways to serve others. You know, I hear frequently now that there's a thing going around called pay it forward, where you go through a drive through and the car in front of you pays your bill. Well, that is what, that's kind of what he's talking about here. Look for ways where you can serve others. Brethren, understand something. It's not how much we know about Scripture. It's how we put that Scripture into action to serve others. People don't care how much we know until they really know how much we care. But then in verse, the first part of verse 8, where it says, He humbled himself and became obedient. The entire life that Christ lived on this earth was that of obedience to the Father, both in word and in deed. But then lastly, notice he says, he became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Now notice there that we should obey God's word and we should submit to him. You remember Jesus in the garden prayed, not my will be done, but thy will. You see, Jesus understood this attitude of obeying the Father. You and I can adjust our attitudes today towards what God desires us to be by following these very simple ten principles that come from Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 down through verse 8. In a world of darkness today, I pray that you will be the light that the world needs. May God bless you, and we will see you again tomorrow with a longer study for tomorrow evening.